Hi folks, happy holiday. Merry belated Christmas for those who celebrate it. In this merry and joyful period, let's lay back and talk about something not so merry and joyful. Out of place I know, but hey, look at the channel's name. Still, it got Christmas in its name so it kind of fits the time frame, right? No? Well, it doesn't matter. I'm doing it anyway. And if you are hearing this, then you click on this video. Might as well continue watching. Alright so, Christmas Island. For some people, it might just be a random small island in the Indian Ocean. For some others, it might just be, well, nothing. Pretty sure some of you haven't got any idea it exists. For those who didn't know, Christmas Island is an external territory of Australia, but it's way off Australia. The closest land to this island is actually Java, and maybe Sumatra. This island is relatively recent in discovery. I believe it was sighted on Christmas around mid-1600s, hence the name, but settled way later in the 1880s. So, why am I talking about this island you might ask? Well, this island is actually famous for zoologists, especially for me, who is a zoologist based in Indonesia. Christmas Island is a somewhat common name to hear because some seabirds have Christmas Island on its name. One of the most famous example is this bird. We call it Cikalang Christmas here, which would translate into Christmas Rygate bird, but not because they can be found around Christmas. The common name should actually be Christmas Island Frygate bird, because they strictly breed in Christmas Island. The scientific term is endemic breeder, by the way. Frygate bird is not the only iconic bird from Christmas Island, though. In fact, the whole island is important bird area. That's not a makeup term, by the way. It is an official term. Well, Technically, now it's called Important Bird and Biodiversity Area, regulated by BirdLife International. Not that it's strictly unique though, there are several IBA, but it's still a good thing of course. If you like bird watching, you will see a lot of birds in this island. Various vagrant birds can be sighted. Vagrants basically means animals who go outside of their regular distribution range from time to time, but not regularly. That means you could see one or two individuals of various species coming to the island from time to time. Hence, even more birds to see. Some relatively widespread birds also perch on this island, especially seabirds. One of, if not the most commonly seen ones, are boobies, especially red-footed boobies, which is relatively common around the equator. However, Abbott's booby is on the other side of the extreme. Abbott's booby was more widespread but now they are limited to the Christmas island, the breeding ground at least. Of course, they can still fly around above the ocean. Still, some birds are true endemic because they are inland birds, four species to be precise, well, as far as I know at least. There are also some endemic subspecies of birds, but not exactly endemic if you are talking about the whole species. So I've talked quite a lot about birds on Christmas island, and of course, it is a nice feat but the island itself is actually not dominated by birds. It's actually dominated by crabs. The most noticeable one is the Christmas Island red crabs. Though, this species is not exactly endemic to Christmas Island. They also exist in Cocos Island, which is quite far away from Christmas Island, yet still a small island. Although, based on genetic evidence, the population in Cocos Island is actually recent immigrants from the Christmas Island. Oh, and you could also find coconut crabs in Christmas Island, which is also quite neat. At this point, some of you might wonder, Okay, so what? What exactly is the point of this video? And to answer that, let's look deeper into the zoological data. Well, ecological data to be precise. So, back to the first animal that I brought up. Frigate birds. Surely not because it's my favorite bird. Surely. Anyway, I've talked about frigate birds before in its own video. But for this video, I would like to point out that there are five species of frigate birds, three of those are categorized as least concerned, while two are categorized as vulnerable, including the Christmas Island frigate bird. Okay, that might not be significant enough for most of you. Let's look at the endemic birds that I showed earlier. One of it is vulnerable, and one of it is endangered. Actually, the Christmas Island thrush was considered critically endangered at some point. Oh, and the Christmas Island goshawk that I showed earlier is also endangered. 
Actually, some of you might notice I've mostly been talking about birds. What about other vertebrates? You know, herpetofauna, mammals? What about them? Well, unfortunately, it's not going well for them. Who am I kidding with? It's pretty bad actually. So, Christmas Island has one endemic snake, which is a blind snake. Pretty hard to find because they are mostly fossorial and they are endangered. They did have a decent amount of endemic lizards though. Four endemic lizard species to be precise. And yes, I did say they did, not they do. One of them is endangered. Two of them is extinct in the wild, meaning they only exist in captivity because we deliberately support them so they survive. And one of them was extinct in the wild, but the only surviving individual was dead in 2014. So now it's literally extinct. That's reptile, but what about mammal? Well, there were several endemic species, but again, I say it, there were, not there are. There were two endemic rodents, both went extinct by the early 1900s. There is one true, listed as critically endangered, but only four individuals had been sighted since the early 1900s. Two individuals back in 1958, and two individuals back in 1985. No other sightings. Could be extinct by now actually. Who knows? There were also two endemic bats. One is critically endangered. The other one is, unfortunately, but might be predictable at this point, went extinct. So, I've been mentioning early 1900s several times when talking about their extinction. What happened exactly? Well, actually, I've mentioned a fact earlier, something that might not seem important. Can you guess what it is? It's human settlement, right before the 1900s. Think about it. The island had been isolated for thousands of years, which gives a good amount of time for specialization. Each group of animals fills their own niche, which, combined with the fact that it is a small isolated island, disconnected from the mainland, the source of the population, all of these little things led to speciation. The problem with insular species is, they are so used to the condition of their little island, their own niche, that a change can cause a great disturbance. And if we're talking about human, oh boy, humans are definitely not just a little change for the ecosystem. Not only did we reshape the land for our settlement, we also started phosphate mining on the island. Apparently, some aerial bombing raids also happened during World War II, which is definitely a big event for those little creatures, and of course not a positive one. But still, human itself is not the only thing affecting the environment. When human settles into a new area, they also bring other animals with them, whether intentional or not. These are alien species. And when these alien species are so dominant and so harmful to the ecosystem balance, they are categorized as invasive alien species, which I've talked about before, by the way. It's actually one of my earlier videos. But anyway, remember when I mentioned the endemic animals of Christmas Island? Notice how there are barely any predators? Well, guess what? Here comes wolf snake, here comes dog, here comes cat, and also, the one species that might be whatever for humans, but actually is the main cause for the population decline of various species in Christmas Island, the yellow crazy ant. This species is actually quite infamous because it terrorized several islands, including Hawaii by the way. One yellow crazy ant is of course whatever, but they come in a large colony, and they are aggressive, easily dominating new areas if opportunity rises. They also spray formic acid which in high enough concentration will be fatal for small creatures, especially crabs. And yes, remember the Christmas Island rat crabs? The migration of this crab is a famous occurrence in Christmas Island, yet their population continues to decline because of yellow crazy ants. Imagine other animals with lower population density. Oh, by the way, not only do they directly impact the population density of some animals, but by doing so, the balance of the ecosystem also changes. That means less animals to control the plant growth, which led to the change of the structure of the forest, which then led to the change of available niche, which then led to the change of animal population, which would fill the niche, and so on and so on. So yes, we kinda messed up, but 
That's not the end of the story though. Remember when I explained about extinct in the wild? We deliberately tried to keep some extinct in the wild animals so they could survive, eventually reintroducing them to the wild, hopefully at least. But still, we couldn't simply do that without restoring the habitat, could we? And so, we did try to do something about the habitat. As far as I can read, all pet cats on Christmas islands are registered and sterilized as to not increase the population. I've also read that no cat is allowed to enter the island. Well, of course we don't talk to the cat, we talk to the people who would bring the cat. Not only that though, we also baited the yellow crazy ants with food. The catch is, the bait contains a low concentration of vipronil, which is an insecticide capable of killing the ants, but not harmful for others. Oh, and also, two-thirds of the island is now a national park, managed by Parks Australia which I believe is a government program. So yes, we messed up, but at the very least, we are trying to sort things out. And that can also apply to basically anything really. You might mess up in life, but you could always do something about it. As long as you don't give up, as long as you keep trying, something might change, for the better or worse of course. But hey, at least you try. And I mean that in the nicest, most respectful way. That's all for now. Oh by the way, did I told you that Javan Rusa is also introduced to Christmas Island? If I did not, well, now you know. Anyway, enjoy your day.